It was said of Quinn's post, the most advanced position of the Anzac sector during the Gallipoli campaign of the First World War, that a day in hell didn't equal an hour in those trenches. Official war correspondent Charles Bean said men passing used to glance at the place as a man looks at a haunted house. Others said the ground of Quinn's post itself seemed to be wounded and bleeding. As Australian troops swept up the gullies and ridges behind what would become Anzac Cove on the 25th of April 1915, a New Zealand machine gun crew took up a defensive position on an exposed section of the first ridge. As advanced parties were eliminated or fell back, the Anzac front line was established along the first ridge following the orders of General Sir Ian Hamilton to dig, dig, dig until you are safe. Australian troops took over the position from the New Zealanders. First the 14th, then the 15th Battalion under the leadership of 27-year-old Major Hugh Quinn. For the Turks, the key position was at the neck as it was a direct approach to the strategic hill Baby 700. For the Anzacs, however, the pivotal position was Quinn's post. If the Turks successfully overran Quinn's, they could potentially flood down Monash Valley at the rear, breaking the back of the Anzac bridgehead. Quinn's post, called Bomber Cert or Bomb Ridge by the Turks, was a classic standoff situation. Anzac machine guns and snipers at Quinn's, Pope's Hill and Russell's Top were trained on the Turkish trenches while the Turks had the Anzacs in their sights from the chessboard, Dead Man's Ridge, Bloody Angle and Bomber Cert. Early on, the danger at Quinn's post became apparent with almost certain death if a head was raised over the parapet. Periscopes became essential for observing enemy movements and periscope rifles were improvised in an attempt to reduce the risk on snipers. In some areas of Quinn's, only 10 metres separated the Anzac and Turkish trenches, leaving the front lines vulnerable to hand-thrown Turkish cricket ball grenades and improvised Anzac jam tin bombs, which could blow an arm off, blind or potentially kill a soldier. It got so bad at Quinn's that anti-bomb screens made of chicken wire were erected in an attempt to provide added protection, but for the troops manning the post, there would be no true feeling of safety. After various attacks and counter-attacks, once sections of opposing trenches were held, communication trenches were dug across no man's land. Upon recapture, the trenches were blockaded with a pile of sandbags effectively making the frontline trenches only feet apart. As the campaign wore on, not only were troops in the claustrophobic trenches at Quinn's Post exposed to sniping, machine guns, bombs, artillery, flies, lice and dysentery, but extensive tunnelling activity had led to the risk of being mined. On the morning of the 29th of May 1915, the Turks detonated mines under Quinn's post, killing many Australians in the frontline trenches, which Turkish troops then flooded into, capturing the position. Throughout the morning, a desperate counter-attack was being hastily organised to recapture the vital position. But when Major Quinn went forward to assess the situation, he was killed by a Turkish sniper. Quinn's post was later recaptured, but at the loss of the commander, after which it was named. The New Zealanders took back command of Quinn's post until they were replaced by the 2nd Light Horse Brigade in time for the August offensive, a plan to break out of the frustrating stalemate. The attack by the Light Horsemen at Quinn's 
in the pre-dawn of the 7th of August 1915 was to coincide with what would go down in history as the infamous charge of their comrades of the 3rd Brigade across the valley at the Neck. But unlike the commanding officer at the Neck, Major George Bourne of the 2nd Brigade saw the costliness and futility of the action and mercifully called it off. After the failure of the August offensive and a decision by the commanders to withdraw, Quinn's post would be held up to the final minutes of the campaign with a meticulously planned evacuation by midnight on the 18th of December 1915 the Anzac sector was held by a skeleton force of 1500 men facing off against tens of thousands of oblivious Turks from 1 a.m the tiny rear guard commenced their final trek down to the beach, firstly from the flanks until reaching the centre positions, Pope's Hill and Quinn's Post, abandoned at a quarter past three, with finally the Neck at 3.25am. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.